Pisa, in the north of Italy, is a grand city with a grand history. For nearly three centuries, until about the year 1300, Pisa was a booming port town, rivaling Venice and Genoa as a sea trading power. From here, where the Arno River meets the sea, its 150-foot galleys cruised most of the Mediterranean. During the Crusades, Pisan ships transported entire armies to the Holy Land. Like many Italian city-states, the Republic of Pisa prided itself in its independence from both popes and emperors. But eventually, its fleet was defeated by Genoa, and its ports silted up, leaving the town's economy high and dry. Pisa's three must-see sites, the Duomo, Baptistry, and Leaning Bell Tower, are reminders of its long-ago sea-trading wealth. This dazzling ensemble floats regally on the best lawn in all of Italy. This square, the Piazza del Duomo, was nicknamed the Campo dei Miracoli, or Field of Miracles, for the grandness of the undertaking. The architectural style throughout is Pisa's very own Pisan Romanesque. Where traditional Romanesque has a heavy fortress feel, Pisan Romanesque is light and elegant. The buildings, with their tight rows of thin columns, geometric designs, and striped colored marble, give the Campo a striking unity. The 200-foot-tall bell tower is famous because it leans about 15 feet. The tower started to lean almost immediately after construction began. Various architects tried to correct the problem of the leaning by straightening up the top section. The tower tilted a little more each year and was in danger of actually falling over. Over the centuries, they tried every trick imaginable to stop the tilt. Finally, they figured it out, stabilized the tower, and in 2001, the Leaning Tower of Pisa was reopened to the climbing public. Climbing to the top is an unforgettable experience, offering great views of the city, the square, and its dramatic Duomo. Pisa's huge and richly decorated Duomo, or cathedral, is artistically more important than its more famous bell tower. Its ornate facade glitters in the sun. The 320-foot nave was the longest in Christendom in the 12th century when it was built. The floor plan is that of a traditional Roman basilica. 68 Corinthian columns dividing the nave into five aisles. The striped marble and arches on columns give it an exotic feel. The pulpit by Giovanni Pisano dates from around 1300. Pisano left no stone uncarved in his pursuit of beauty. While this was sculpted over a century before the Renaissance began, Michelangelo himself traveled here to marvel at Pisano's work, drawing inspiration from its realism. Around the top, Christ's life unfolds in a continuous scroll. The infamous Massacre of the Innocents is powerful. King Herod, so threatened by this newborn king, orders the slaughter of all the firstborn sons in hopes of killing baby Jesus. Mary and Joseph load up the donkey and hustle their son down to Egypt as the bloody massacre proceeds. The sculptor captures the horror of this event with a skill unprecedented in its day. Pisano's 400 intricately sculpted figures all weave a complex theological ideal. This provides a symbolic foundation designed to legitimize and reinforce the gospel message the priests read from the lectern crowning the pulpit. In the Middle Ages, you couldn't even enter the church until you were baptized. That's why baptistries like Pisa's were freestanding buildings adjacent to the church. The interior is simple and spacious. A statue of John, the first Baptist, the man who baptized Christ, seems to say, welcome to my baptistry. The finely crafted font is plenty big for baptizing adults by immersion, medieval style. The highlight here for most is the remarkable acoustics, resulting in echoes long enough to let you sing three-part harmony solo. <laughs> 